Hey, thanks for checking out Nuts and Bolts with Tone. Today, I'm going to talk to you about TTS, Text Talking Shop. That is a new group of people on YouTube that have come together. Myself and nine other people on YouTube have come together to do a video series. We're not quite sure how often we're going to drop a video, maybe once a month, not sure. Um, I know that we're dropping ours today and it's going to be talking about what got us into this industry, how we started, and kind of what we do. Uh, so it's going to be, and after this, we're going to be doing things where we talk about maybe the same, like a, a, a certain kind of tool, a certain kind of tool brand, uh, maybe some sort of repair, and they'll all be linked together to kind of give all of our perspectives because we all have different uh, different types of backgrounds and different uh, different types of uh, experience, different industries that we're in. Um, some guys work on, you know, some some people work on heavy machines. Uh, some work on buses and and natural gas and diesel. Some are in, you know, like myself in automotive, light truck. Uh, we, you know, we have some people that that specialize in power stroke. And uh, there's several of us in the independent industry. Uh, so anyways, I'm really, really excited to bring this to you and also excited to kind of tell you about how I started. What got me started doing this mechanic thing, right? So I have worked in every industry there is. I mean, I, I, I was a dishwasher in a restaurant when I was younger, to Togo's, to, you know, construction, to... A, a furniture uh, a furniture line where I built furniture 100 frames a day. Uh, I worked in a shoe factory uh, all day on on an assembly line. I've worked in a in a on a, in a industrial side roofing uh, repair uh, where we go out and, and to malls and things like that and find leaks and fix them. Uh, I've worked in uh, just about every industry, not every industry, but a lot of industries. And every time something would happen, I would lose my job in that field for whatever reason, whether it was seasonal, whether it was in construction, I couldn't do drywall. So in the winter time, naturally I, I had to go because, well, there's not a whole lot to do in California in the winter time if you can't do drywall. Uh, so anyway, so I was beating the pavement every day for, I swear it felt like two months. It might've only been a month. Not sure I went door to door to every single business, even though I knew that they wouldn't hire me without something to offer them. And I was at home one day, I lived in Benicia, and I was eating lunch, and I saw a commercial for Sequoia Institute. And I don't know what intrigued me about this commercial, because prior to this moment, I bought a car when I was younger, like young, like 20 years old. I didn't get my license till I was almost 18. Uh, I was like 20 years old, I got like a 75 Maverick. And I bought it, you know, my first car. I saved up 250 bucks and I was gonna buy a car. And uh, so I bought this car, I bought spark plugs and belts and all this stuff and I was gonna tune it up. And I was stuck at two o'clock in the morning with a dead battery because I didn't get the alternator belt on tight enough. Now, I did all this work by myself. Not quite sure how I figured it all out because um, I was only a skateboarder at the time. I wasn't any sort of mechanically inclined individual. Um, aside from putting together skateboards. And uh, so at that point I vowed I would never work on cars again because I had to sit and wait for like two or three hours uh, to get help to get my car home. And so I never worked on another car ever again. And uh, so anyways, fast forward to 17 years ago. And uh, so I saw this commercial for Sequoia Institute and not quite sure what intrigued me about this, but something did. Something inside of me just was drawn to it. And I went and and I went to their website and I read every single word that was on their website. I mean, I read the fine print, I read the copyright, I read everything. And something about me just said, soak this up, I don't know. <clears throat> and so it had, you know, stuff about ASEs and smog license and I don't even know what any of that stuff was at the time, but Whatever it was, it made me interested. So I, I made an appointment and I think I went down there uh, within a within three days. I went down there, um, I toured the campus, it was in Fremont. 
and uh, I toured the campus and I was just ready to dive in head first. Uh, this looked like the beginning of a career. Um, and I think that never had a career in my life uh, and anything to fall back on, anything to, you know, not worry about. And so anyway, so uh, I, si I signed up like that day, like I was there. I didn't leave the campus. I signed up, signed all the forms. And uh, I think three weeks later, the, the first class was going to start. And so I, uh, I started the class and I did, the, the classes were six weeks each, four hours a day. And so I would go to school for four hours a day and I found a shop in Benicia that was willing to hire me. And I worked at that shop for four hours a day. So I'd go to school eight to 12 and I would, uh, and I would go to work from one to five um, at a shop in Benicia. And the whole time, you know, I went to school, it was like 12 weeks, the first 12 weeks, I think. Uh, maybe it was a little bit longer and I decided that I wanted to double phase. Um, so I took, I quit my job. Uh, I took a hiatus, I would say, uh, and I double phased, took two classes a day for 12 weeks and knocked out, you know, more classes in quicker time. Cause I was ready to get my career going. I was ready to get it started. And, uh, every class, um, some things that were told to me every class by every instructor, you know, get every ASE, get every license, get every certificate, get everything you can possibly get, put it in a binder. And that's your, you know, that's your resume. When you go to, you know, apply for a job, this is going to be what you go and you show them. And this is going to explain you. And uh, so I did, I, I took ASEs. I, I had a really hard time with them. I'm not a good test taker. Uh, so it might've taken me a few tries to get some of them. I'm in the beginning, but I, I took them. I took every ASC. I took them all as I, as I took the class. I took the ASC. I, you know, California brake license. Um, you know, I finished the, the school, got my smog license, got, you know, as many ASCs as I could. Every training I could possibly go to, I went to. And I went to work and I kept my, my ears open and I asked for advice and I listened and I my goal was to learn how to work on to work on everything on everything and i didn't want to work in a dealership i didn't want to work on one type of thing i wanted to be well-rounded and just work on everything and so i i did i i worked at this shop all the way through school as soon as i got done with school i got my smog license and i wanted to move to a bigger city so i found a shop in sacramento and uh, I went, talked to the owner and said, hey, I got a lot of knowledge, but I don't have a lot of experience. I just haven't had the opportunity to apply it yet. And the owner said, you know, come on in. And I started and day one, I got five work orders and I had to learn real fast. It was complete flat rate. And I had to learn real fast how to prioritize, how to manage my time, how to look at the cars that I had and figure out what to look at first. And, and uh, that took some time. But anyways, I, I did really well and I never, ever, ever made minimum wage. I always, I always made more than I would minimum wage. And so I always did really well flat rate, but I'm just saying at my, at my worst time, I never made minimum wage. So I'm pretty proud of that. And uh, so anyway, so I worked at that shop and I, I learned how to weld. I learned how it failed smogs and yeah i live in california so we got smogs we got uh we got break and lamp for salvage titles i got those licenses i i learned all those i got all the ascs i could um, i kept taking training i learned how to work on diesels i learned how to work on you know everything and i i learned a lot and i became very well rounded <clears throat> and when that shop closed down i found out for the first time in my life I found out what having a career was all about and that I found out like a no in November, the beginning of November that the shop was going to shut down cause he just didn't have the business. And I had a, a kid do, uh, you know, in January and I was pretty freaked out. It's Christmas coming. I got a kid do and, but I had this resume that said like, Hey, I could do a lot of stuff and I have a lot of things. And I went and I, all these different shops and you know I only went to like the top tier shops in each town and I walked into one shop and they looked at my resume and said you got a minute 
and basically their shop foreman had just left and everything that my that my resume uh, had on it was what he had and was leaving and so I pretty much started with that shop uh, almost the uh, actually I started like January 2nd uh, my kid was born January 1st and so I started the day after might have been the third um, but anyways and so since then you know I've just built my career and uh, really just tried to be well-rounded and learn how to work on you know just about everything and I really try to help people I like to help people I, that's what I, my channel is all about my channel is about helping people not make the mistakes that I make um, I'll, I'll do everything I can to tell somebody something so they don't fall on their face because I don't I don't want to see that uh, if I can give them a shortcut I'll give them a shortcut if I can you know give anybody a you know a tip I will I, I'm not that guy that would just sit there and not say anything um, so you learn a lesson uh, you'll learn your own lessons you know you'll learn, you'll learn a lot of lessons in this industry uh, but any help you can get from people uh, is fantastic you know that's but one of the things biggest pet peeve I have is when you offer advice to somebody and they close their ears and they don't want to hear it and you just god that bugs me that bugs me so much, especially when you're trying to help somebody that just doesn't have the experience that you have. And uh, it's it's really hard to, <laughs> to, to take that when someone isn't willing to listen. But, you know, hey, there's stubborn people out there. So, anyways, so that is my bio. And so I work in an independent shop. I've worked in uh, several independent shops, not very many, uh, doing diesel, gas, um, pretty much everything diagnostics R and R everything besides rebuilding transmissions um, that's that's what I do so on this channel you obviously see I show you how to diagnose things I, sh I talk about uh, I show you how to repair things I show you how to uh, I show you tools and that's what we're all about and that's the tech talking the text talking shop is all about uh, just as a group coming together to give you our perspectives on different things and putting it all together and I think it's going to be a really good thing I think you're going to like it I think you're going to enjoy it and I'm really excited about it so here we are it's the new year we're gonna start this year off right thanks for checking out nuts and bolts with tone check out my Instagram at nuts and bolts with tone see my daily life as a mechanic uh, also we have a we have a Instagram page for the text talking shop uh, it's text underscore uh, talking underscore shop. And you'll see all of our bios on there as well. Um, we try to post to that every day, a little bit that we're doing. And uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. And also uh, just stay tuned, 2021. I got a lot of cool things coming. I got a lot of good ideas and I think you're gonna like it. See you next time.